Today I'd like to tell you about a beautiful vector calculus formula that I discovered about a year ago. Now, the word discovered should really be in quotes because the nature of this formula is so elementary that I have a hard time imagining it's actually new. Nevertheless, I have not seen it anywhere and I'm very confident that you have never seen it either. However, you will agree with me that this formula is indeed so elementary that it should be in every vector calculus textbook. So it is my hope that as a result of this video, somebody will point out a source to me where this formula is mentioned. Meanwhile, I'm excited to tell you about it, so let's get into it. But first, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge my supporters. Thank you so much for supporting my endeavors in mathematics. Imagine a closed two-dimensional surface, such as the surface boundary of a three-dimensional shape. The term closed refers to the fact that such a surface does not have its own contour boundary. If it did, it would be called a patch, and it's actually a patch that's at the center of the ultimate formula. But for now, we're considering a closed two-dimensional surface. Now, it's well known that the integral of the unit normal over such a surface, in other words, the sum of all the normals around the surface, equals zero. Now, this fact makes perfect intuitive sense. Imagine that we blow up a balloon, then this integral corresponds to the net force of internal pressure. Indeed, according to the standard model of pressure, the force of pressure is proportional to the value of the pressure field, which we assume to be uniform, and points along the normal direction. So the force at every point is one and the same number p times the exterior normal. And so this integral corresponds to the net force of pressure from within. Now we know that such a balloon will simply not go anywhere under the influence of the pressure from within. Therefore the net force is zero and it makes sense that this integral is also zero. Now, interestingly, this physical example suggests another integral relationship. Indeed, such a balloon will not spontaneously rotate under the influence of pressure from within. Therefore, the net torque of the force of pressure should also be zero. And that torque is, of course, expressed by the surface integral of the cross product of the position vector with the force of pressure, which we assume is proportional to the unit normal. Therefore, we should expect that that integral also equals zero, and indeed it does, and you will be able to prove that with the techniques that we'll discuss later. Now, you may also wonder, what's the interpretation of the integral of the dot product between the position vector and the unit normal? And that integral equals three times the volume of the enclosed shape. Fascinating. However, what we're concerned with in this video is the integral of the unit normal not over a closed surface, but over a patch with a contour boundary L. Now, I get only one shot at drawing this on the board, so let me take my time doing that, and then I'll reveal to you what the answer is. Okay, here it comes. The integral of the unit normal over a patch S with boundary L equals one half the contour integral over the boundary of the cross product of the position vector and the unit tangent to the boundary. Isn't it a beauty? I mean, every element that you might think is there is actually there in a perfect combination. Now, before I show you the proof of this formula, let's talk about a few of its very interesting and important implications. First, let's consider the special case of a flat surface patch S, like this shape right here. Now, on a flat surface, the normal points in the same direction at all points. So when integrating the normal, we're integrating a constant. And the result is, of course, that constant times the total area of the patch. Now let's take a look at the contour integral. Here, I chose the origin for the position vector right here. Previously, I chose it to be elsewhere, but as we will discover later, the position of the origin doesn't matter. So let's assume that it's here. Now, the cross product of the position vector and the unit tangent 
points in the orthogonal direction by definition and its magnitude equals the area of this parallelogram formed by the position vector and the unit tangent. When multiplied by dl, it becomes the area of this infinitesimal parallelogram. And with a factor of one half, it becomes the area of this infinitesimal triangle. And when we integrate it over the contour, we're essentially adding up the areas of all of these infinitesimal triangles. So in the end, we once again get the total area of the patch multiplied by the unit vector in the orthogonal direction. The same result. So in this special case, the formula works and it was an essential check. Next, observe that this formula tells us that the integral of the unit normal over a surface patch depends only on the location of its contour boundary and not its shape. In other words, if there was another surface here, no matter how complicated, as long as it had the same contour boundary, it would have the same integral of normal. Now, this formula says so explicitly, so there's really nothing to add here except I'd like to point out a potential flaw in an alternative argument. You may want to prove this based on the fact that the integral of the unit normal over a closed surface is zero. So you may say something like this. Now, let me draw two surfaces as curves. So I'll be drawing curves, but they are really representing surfaces. So we have one surface here and another one here with the same contour boundary represented by these two points. Now let me draw the normals, and I will draw the normals on this bottom surface in the wrong direction temporarily. Okay, so you will say that the integral of the unit normal over this combined surface is zero. Therefore, the integral over the top surface equals minus the integral over the bottom surface. And if we were to flip these normals so that all normals point in a consistent direction, then the integral over the top surface equals the integral over the bottom surface. Now, this is a very elegant argument, and it's used very commonly in mathematics. But in this case, there is a slight problem with it, and that is, the statement that the integral of the normal over closed surface vanishes was made only for smooth surfaces. And the combined surface here, even though each individual surface is smooth, the combined surface is not smooth because there is an obvious kink all along the boundary. So in order to use this argument, we would have to extend the statement that the integral of the normal over closed surface is zero to surfaces that are not smooth, that are at the very least piecewise smooth. And that would require some analysis. This formula, however, gives us the desired result without the same complication. Finally, let's discuss the issue of the location of the position vector. The formula itself doesn't specify, and we've been acting like it doesn't matter. And in fact, it doesn't. And to see this, we need to combine two observations. First is that the contour integral of the unit tangent by itself around the boundary is zero. This makes perfect intuitive sense because the unit tangent corresponds to the velocity of a material particle moving around the boundary with unit speed. And so the integral of the unit tangent corresponds to the total displacement of such a particle as it moves around the closed loop which, of course, is zero. Now, the second observation is that moving the origin of the position vector simply amounts to adding a constant vector to each position vector. Now, from these two observations, it takes just a couple of simple steps to show that moving the origin of the position vector leaves the contour integral unchanged. So these are the few insights I wanted to share with you. 
and in the rest of the video, I will outline my tensor calculus proof of this formula. In this part of the video, I will simply scroll through a PDF of my paper that I have recently submitted for publication. It has not yet been accepted, but a copy of it can be found on Archive, and I will of course provide a link to it. This paper is not about this formula, but instead describes an approach to tensor calculus that emphasizes the use of geometric vectors. The proof of the formula is only one of several highlights in this paper and is meant to serve as an advertisement for the proposed approach. As I said, this will only be an outline of the proof and will hopefully give you a taste of tensor calculus and in particular of working with vector quantities. If you would like to figure out all the details, and I hope that you would, check out my textbooks on the subject which you can find for free on my website at greenfield.org. All right, let's take a look at the proof. The key to the entire derivation is this tensor expression for the unit normal. Now, as you know, the unit normal can be calculated with the help of a cross product of any two linearly independent vectors in the tangent plane. And this elegant expression uses the elements of the surface basis. And what you should know about this object, known as the Levi Civita symbol, is that it is represented by a two by two skew symmetric matrix. Now, the elements of the basis are the surface derivatives of the position vector. So we now have this expression for the unit normal. And this expression features a derivative and a product, and is therefore subject to the product rule. And when we apply the product rule, we end up with the derivative applied to the entire product, and from it we subtract a term where the derivative has moved to the surface basis. And when the derivative is applied to the surface basis, the result is the curvature tensor multiplied by the unit normal. And one of the key characteristics of the curvature tensor is that it is symmetric. And so when we see this combination, which represents the trace of the matrix product of these two objects, the result is zero. And therefore this entire term drops out. And so we're left with a single term representing the unit normal. And this identity tells us that the unit normal is actually the surface divergence of something. And that something is this combination right here. And that makes it subject to the surface divergence theorem, which we're about to apply. So we'll integrate both sides over the surface. And if the surface is closed and therefore has no boundary, there is nothing on the right-hand side of the divergence theorem. And so we must conclude that the surface integral of the normal over closed surface is zero. And this, of course, is an identity that we're already familiar with for closed surfaces. Now, when the surface does have a boundary, then by the divergence theorem, we end up with this contour integral, which now features this object, n, that represents the components of the tangent normal. And in combination with the Levi Civita symbol, we end up with the components of the unit tangent. And when the components of the unit tangent are combined with the surface basis, we end up with the unit tangent itself. And therefore, we have proven our identity. Now, I hope that you enjoyed that. And in the next video, we will prove this elegant formula as well as this elegant formula. And I very much look forward to that.